outpourings of grief and horror at death of Diana, Princess of Wales. The body of Princess Diana is brought back to Britain. And in sports news, Mayo beat Offaly to face Kerry in All-Ireland final. Good evening. A plane with the coffin containing the body of Princess Diana landed at the RAF airbase at Northolt, northwest of London, shortly after 7 o'clock tonight. The coffin was accompanied by her former husband, Prince Charles, and her two sisters, who flew to Paris earlier today. The princess died there in a car crash along with her companion, Dodi Fayed, and the driver of their car. Throughout the entire world, expressions of shock and tributes have been made. Here, President Robinson said that she was deeply distressed by the news. She described Diana as a devoted mother with a deep sense of compassion for those less fortunate in our society. The Taoiseach said he was deeply shocked and saddened, and he offered his condolences and those of the Irish government to her family, particularly her sons. Just over two hours ago, the RAF plane bearing Princess Diana's body from Paris arrived at Northolt Air Base just outside London. Prince Charles and Diana's two sisters, Lady Jane Fellows and Lady Sarah McCorkerdale, were on the flight accompanying the remains. Tony Blair and other dignitaries stood on the tarmac as the coffin bearing the princess was lowered from the aircraft and borne away by a guard of honour from the Queen's colour squadron, the RAF. The coffin draped in the royal standard. It was placed in the waiting hearse for removal to an undisclosed mortuary in preparation for the funeral, the details of which have yet to be announced. And there was a brief word between the Prince of Wales and the Prime Minister and his party before Prince Charles boarded the plane once again for the journey back to Scotland, where the rest of the royal family, including Princes William and Harry, have remained throughout the day. A spokesman said simply that Charles was going back to Balmoral, back to the boys. Even for the British royal family, such grief has its personal pain. The public side of that grief could be seen all day at the Princess's London home at Kensington Palace, People have been coming to lay wreaths and pay their own personal tribute. It was a similar scene at Buckingham Palace. People have been turning up here since dawn when news of the tragedy first broke. And as Princess Diana's body is brought back to London this evening, here at Buckingham Palace they're still turning up. Some just simply to peer through the railings, an expression of grief. It's a national outpouring of emotion for the woman who years ago joined the royal family, but somehow over those years, became something more than just a royal. At St. Paul's Cathedral in London tonight, thousands of people turned up to mourn the princess in a hastily arranged service. Several thousand more, many who'd travelled hundreds of miles and who'd queued outside, failed to get in. It was here at St. Paul's in a royal wedding watched on television by millions around the world that Diana had joined the British royal family in what most at the time believed was the beginning of a real-life fairy tale. But tonight, the order of service stated simply, Diana, Princess of Wales, a special service. This morning, Tony Blair paid his own tribute to Princess Diana. I feel like everyone else in this country today, utterly devastated. Our thoughts and prayers are with Princess Diana's family, in particular her two sons, the two boys. Our hearts go out to them. We are today a nation in Britain in a state of shock. It's expected to be tomorrow before the details of the funeral will be announced. Parliament, which is still in its summer recess, is likely to be recalled to allow for further political tributes to be made. For now, though, the ordinary people of Britain are attempting to come to terms with the death of the young woman who said she wanted to be their Queen of Hearts. The President, Mrs. Robinson, said the death of the Princess of Wales was a very real tragedy. She said her heart went out to the two young princes who not only had to cope with the grief and loss of their mother, but who have to do it in a public life.
The president was, in her words, surrounded by bright young faces at the close of the community games. She said their potential and all they represented brought to mind the very real tragedy the world woke up to this morning, the death of a young mother of two young boys. Mrs. Robinson said on behalf of the Irish people she'd sent messages of sympathy to the royal family and to the people of Britain. Then she spoke from her own experience as a mother and a public figure. I have a sense that the messages of presidents and of prime ministers are not really going to matter very much to two boys who not only have to cope with the grief and loss of their mother, but have to do it in a public life. And of that, I have a great understanding because I come to the end of seven years of being in public life with my family. And it really is an extra dimension of difficulty. And my heart goes out to two boys who have to cope with great difficulty. And sometimes that happens to young people, that they're just asked to bear a very, very hard burden. And to bear a burden like that, you need your family, you need your friends, and where possible, you need privacy, you need time, you need to be able to be equipped and helped and supported in doing it. And it will be very, very hard for them. And I think you must have thought about them quite a lot today as you were participating in your community games. Throughout the day, shocked politicians and world figures have been paying tribute to the late Princess of Wales. Your confirmation of Princess Diana's huge impact on the international stage, world figures queued up all day to pay tribute to her. She was uh, undoubtedly one of the best ambassadors of Great Britain, associated with the wealthy causes. She's been always very anxious to help the poor, to, to help me with the, with the book, very anxious. Uh, we liked her very much. We admired her work for children, for people with AIDS, for the cause of ending the scourge of landmines in the world, and for her love for her children, William and Harry. Early this morning, the first visible sign of the tragedy in Dublin, as flags at the British Embassy were set at half-mast to mark last night's tragic deaths. The British ambassador echoed the grief of the international community. From my own personal experience, she was extremely kind and comforting to um, people who were dying. I had a friend with cancer she went to visit regularly. So I think we will miss all of that. As worshippers gathered at St. Patrick's Cathedral, some were not yet aware of the sad events in Paris. Total shock, because I hadn't heard it. We only came to Ireland yesterday, and we just... I don't know, I don't know what to say. I didn't hear it. Uh, I'm very shocked to hear that. Um, I'm very sorry for her. I think she had a troubled, uh, quite a troubled life. Well, it's a tragedy. But uh, maybe the press has a... Question to answer being too intrusive. The Dean of St. Patrick's opened his morning service with a statement of condolence. The many sorrows which have already filled her young life give an added poignancy to this final tragedy. Members of the public buying papers already dated by last night's events were angry about the involvement of press photographers in the chase which apparently led to the horrendous car crash. I think it's disgraceful. They should leave her alone. She went through enough, didn't she? And I think they should leave her alone. I wonder how they feel now about that. Freelance correspondent Lorna Hogg has covered the royal family, including Princess Diana, for 13 years. She says an unscrupulous paparazzi pack has sprung up on the continent, seeking to cash in on the public fascination with celebrities. This isn't just a royal thing. It's the same at Cannes. It's the same at film festivals. There are some very ruthless people determined to earn huge sums of money selling to the popular papers all over the world. Lorna Hogg believes the circumstances of Diana's tragic death must prompt an ethical debate for the international media. Editors are going to have to decide if they're going to pay out these large sums of money and hence contact the agencies who will employ the photographers to go out and take these pictures. The general public will also have to decide if they want to buy these p papers carrying the pictures because in a way that's going to make the editor's decision for them. Fine Gael leader John Bruton awesome. echoed today's concern about media persecution. There is a right to know but there's also a right not to be persecuted and there's a necessity to preserve standards of respect for every individual and I think there was a lack of respect shown 
to Prince, Princess Diana. A book of condolence will be opened at the British Embassy at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. In the meantime, members of the public continue to deliver their tributes to the People's Princess who touched their hearts. And now to London, where we're joined by our correspondent there, Brian O'Connell. Brian, the British government have been backing away from new privacy laws in favour of self-regulation. Will Diana's death bring about a change? There's certainly going to be a lot of calls for um, uh, some form of statutory basis for a privacy law after uh, the circumstances in which Princess Diana was killed. However, Tony Blair uh, prefers, is known to prefer uh, the self-regulation of the press, as you say, and there is no guarantee that uh, any statutory law would actually work. If you look at what happened in, 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 in Paris, uh, France has some of the toughest privacy laws anywhere in Europe, and it can still happen there. And the reason is that uh, the market for these sort of pictures, as, as you heard Lorna Hogg saying there, uh, the editors who buy these pictures, the readers who buy the papers, it sells papers, it's an international market. It's not just based in Britain or based in France or based in Ireland, it's all over the world. So it's, it's uncertain, even if Britain did introduce such laws, that it would actually work. Now, when do we expect news of the funeral arrangements and what are they likely to be? Well, a short time ago, um, a Buckingham Palace spokeswoman confirmed that there wouldn't be an announcement about funeral arrangements until tomorrow, tomorrow morning. Uh, the time tomorrow morning uh, is yet to be confirmed. We don't yet know whether or not it will even be a state funeral. Now, and there are arrangements which are permanently in place um, uh, for a, a death in the British royal family. Nobody expected... Uh, it to be, um, to be them to be put into operation so soon and certainly not for the death of Princess Diana. Um, so uh, there, there are well-oiled heels. Uh, it's a mechanism that, that is more or less permanently there. Whether or not it's a state funeral, we don't know. Princess Diana relinquished the title, reluctantly the title, uh, Her Royal Highness after her divorce from Prince Charles. Um, it looks like it certainly won't be until the end of this week, uh, at the earliest, possibly the beginning of next week. Now, her death has been both public and private, and I understand Prince Charles has returned to his sons in Scotland. Yes, uh, after uh, the RAF plane brought uh, Princess Diana's body back to London, Prince Charles got back on the plane again, and he flew back to uh, Scotland. The royal family are still in Aberdeen, uh, Princes William and Harry are in Balmoral, I beg your pardon, Princes William and Harry have been there all day with uh, the, the, the Queen, Queen Elizabeth, and um, it's not certain when uh, they'll be coming back to London, possibly not for another day or two. I think certainly there is a feeling that uh, uh, they, they want a certain amount of privacy to, 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 uh, to grieve, uh, and uh, only someone like Balmoral could afford that kind of privacy. Brian, thanks very much for joining us. And there we take a break for the moment. Still to come, sports news and more on the day's tragic events. She was the world's most photographed woman. We look at the part played by the media in her extraordinary life. Welcome back. The main news again this evening, the body of Diana, the Princess of Wales, has been flown back to Britain. The Prince of Wales is to return to Balmoral tonight to be with his children. Diana died in hospital in Paris as doctors fought to save her life. Her car was being pursued by press photographers when it crashed, raising questions over the role of the media in the princess's life. French police are now questioning a number of the photographers and have launched a criminal investigation. Diana's former husband, Prince Charles, and her sisters, Lady Jane and Lady Sarah, came to Paris to bring her remains back to Britain. Shortly after 6 p.m., her coffin was brought from the hospital where doctors had lost a fight to save her hours before. The French president, Jacques Chirac, and his wife, Bernadette, were among the mourners who watched on silently. Now France will try to establish the circumstances in which this tragedy took place. The people's princess and her 41-year-old boyfriend spent their last happy times together dining at the Alphayad-owned Ritz Hotel in central Paris. Shortly after midnight, they left by a back door with the princess's British bodyguard and a hotel driver. Their black Mercedes 600 was pursued by photographers in cars and on motorbikes when they drove off. As the driver attempted to shake off the posse, he used an expressway tunnel just past the French National Parliament. But he lost control 
and the Mercedes ploughed into a pillar near the Alma Bridge. Reports suggest the car was travelling at between 60 and 100 miles an hour when it crashed. It bounced off a wall and overturned, with the roof collapsing on the occupants. The driver and Dodi Alfaya died instantly. The bodyguard is still alive. Emergency staff worked frantically for over an hour to free Diana. She was rushed to the Petit Salpetrier hospital with massive head and chest injuries and suffered cardiac arrest soon after arrival. Two surgeons tried for two hours to revive her, but at five o'clock she was pronounced dead. Britain's ambassador to Paris and the French interior minister were at her bedside. Police detained seven photographers at the crash scene. Six of them are French nationals, one is a Macedonian. They're being questioned about their role in the accident and their behavior at the scene afterwards. Thousands of people have visited the tunnel during the day reflecting the widespread sense of disbelief. I think she had a, a very, very uh, difficult life in a way, very easy but also very difficult. Once, you know, she, uh, she came to, uh, to be, you know, in, in the limelight uh, as, she, as she was, and I think she, she, she tried to do her best. And I feel also very, very sorry for her two sons. Charles up to a point. Even after the accident, they were still thinking of shooting photos rather than helping people in a car. This is really what I think is the, the worst. She's a great lady, and I think everybody will miss her. And she has done a lot for the human being, for the disabled, uh, for the people suffering and everything. She has been around the world, uh, taken care of everybody, and I think it's a sad loss. And I think the people who have done this, they should be ashamed of themselves. This great historic city recognized and welcomed Diana as someone exceptional. It is deeply disturbed by the needless loss of life. I'm joined now by our Europe correspondent, Tommy Gorman in Paris. Tommy, obviously a very sad moment when Prince Charles arrived at the hospital. Yes, it was very sad indeed, very sombre. And indeed, this, this evening as well, the body of uh, Dodi El Fayed was brought back to London. It was taken from a mosque here in central Paris. Not the same amount of onlookers, but a sense of sadness nonetheless. Now, Tommy, what have French police said about their investigation? Well, they have in custody seven photographers. They must be charged or released within 48 hours. But some new and interesting information has come to light in the course of the day. It transpires that a British newspaper was supposedly offered photographs of Princess Di in the car after the accident last night for a sum of £200,000. And a spokesman for the National Enquirer, an American tabloid, has said tonight that there's talk of photographs being available for up to a million pounds, and he has called for a worldwide boycott of such photographs. So those rumours that photographers were actually taking pictures after the accident would seem to be quite true. Now, lawyers for the Al Fayyad family say they will take a civil prosecution case against the photographers. Yes, that has also emerged tonight. Uh, other interesting information that's come to light relates to the actual driver because there was some puzzlement here in Paris how an experienced driver, despite the presence of the paparazzi, could let a car go out of control. And now it has emerged that the man wasn't in fact a professional driver, but he was the deputy head of security at the Ritz Hotel. Of course, the bodyguard who was in the car, the only survivor of the accident, is still in intensive care. And it will be interesting to see if he has further evidence, maybe to shed on the tragic events of this morning. Tommy Gorman, thanks very much for joining us. Diana, Princess of Wales, has been in the focus of intense public interest ever since her engagement and subsequent marriage to Prince Charles, heir to the British throne, 16 years ago. Their romance began after she met the prince at her parents' home in 1977. It was the stuff of fairy tales, the coy young nursery teacher courted by the prince. Her engagement at the age of 19 to the heir to the British throne captured the public imagination like nothing else. Millions across the world watched as the couple exchanged their vows in the magnificence of St. Paul's Charles Cathedral in 1981. From then on, she was never far from the public gaze, delighting people as she went about her charity work. She became particularly important for AIDS sufferers at a time of great prejudice and fear. The virus is now loose 
and most of the time those it ensnares remain outwardly unaffected. HIV does not make people dangerous to know, so you can shake their hands and give them a hug. Heaven knows they need it. A year after the wedding, Prince William was born, but by the time of the birth of her second son, reports of difficulties in the royal marriage began to appear. Then came Andrew Morton's book, Diana, Her True Story. Here was a princess trapped in a loveless marriage, a princess who'd attempted suicide and suffered from bulimia. The state of their relationship was graphically illustrated as Diana sat alone at the Taj Mahal, that famous monument to love. Charles had resumed his relationship with Camilla Parker Bowles, and Diana began a relationship with cavalry officer James Hewitt. The couple officially separated in 1992. In 1995, Diana gave a sensational interview confessing her own adultery. Were you unfaithful? Yes, I adored him. Yes, I was in love with him. But I was very let down. The couple divorced in July 1996. Diana described it as the saddest day of her life. In recent times, the princess championed the anti-landmines campaign. Today, her contribution was described as immense. Anger over the death of Princess Diana has sparked calls in Britain for tough measures to protect public figures from prying photographers. Ever since her engagement to Prince Charles at the age of 19, Diana has lived with a constant glare of media attention. Today, her brother Earl Charles Spencer said the press had blood on its hands. He said he always believed the media would kill her in the end. Celebrated by the tabloid press for 16 years, last night Diana died its victim. Her brother, Earl Spencer, had angry words for the photographers who had hounded her. This is not a time for recriminations, but for sadness. However, I would say that I always believed the press would kill her in the end. But not even I could imagine that they would take such a direct hand in her death, as seems to be the case. It would appear that every proprietor and editor of every publication that has paid for intrusive and exploitative photographs of her encouraging greedy and ruthless individuals to risk everything in pursuit of Diana's image, has blood on his hands today. Shots like these of Diana with Dodi al Fayed may be unclear, but they sold for hundreds of thousands of pounds, boosting tabloid sales and profits worldwide. The press and the public were obsessed with their princess. She was an icon. Everything about her, even her cellulite, was news, and news is money. At Buckingham Palace today, there were angry scenes between mourners and photographers. I blame the Sun newspaper and the Hill. The Sun was nowhere near it. I hate the Sun myself. No, the paparazzi were there. But Diana's relationship with the photographers who followed her every move was ambiguous. She clearly resented their intrusion and sometimes she retaliated. But she courted the press too. After her divorce, her new role as Queen of Hearts depended on media attention, and she used her face and market potential to highlight many issues, most recently her campaign to ban landmines. Her death has renewed and intensified the debate about media freedom. In Britain, as in Ireland, the press is self-regulating. Today, there have been calls for legislative curbs but many doubt whether legislation would have prevented Diana's tragic death. France has very stringent privacy laws. They were completely ineffective, both at Saint-Tropez and clearly in Paris. Uh, the story about the Prince of Wales, the story about the breakup of the royal marriage, was a worldwide story. It had huge market potential in every country in the world. Even if you banned it in one country, the market would still be sufficiently great to ensure that the harassment continued. It was that harassment and greed that killed her. The death of the Princess of Wales has been particularly felt in the north, where her patronage of several charities brought her into contact with people from across the community. Tributes have been pouring in from politicians and church leaders. The Catholic Archbishop of Armagh, Dr Sean Brady, said he was shocked and saddened to hear of her death. The Church of Ireland primate, Dr Robin Eames, said he was deeply saddened by news of Diana's death. As a member of the royal family and patron of several charities, Princess Diana visited the North frequently. Perhaps her most high-profile visit was to the Urn Hospital in Enniskillen, where, accompanied by her then-husband Charles, she met survivors of the IRA bombing of November 1987. 
There she spoke to Gordon and Joan Wilson, whose daughter Marie died in the blast. Later she wrote two letters to Joan Wilson. While royalty is perhaps more significant to the Unionist population, it's fair to say that Diana was an icon which transcended royalty or sectarian loyalties. I think she was universally popular, and uh, not just in Belfast, but throughout Northern Ireland, indeed throughout Ireland. In Belfast, throughout the day, there was shock and sadness as people laid flowers and tributes at the City Hall. Really shocked and very sad. One of her favourite members of the royal family, and she had an awful lot going for her. And I think she was treated very badly by some members of the royal family. Tragic. I feel for the boys this morning. I think it's terrible for them. It's just very hard to take in. I think, I mean, it, I think it shows just how much actually she was or people felt that they knew her. There was that difficult period during the period of the divorce and one wondered how people would react. And I had no doubt, talking to constituents in Newton Ards and around there, that she was very popular indeed and remained so. A very gracious lady and a lovely human being. She came to Church House just after we reopened. She took her time speaking to every individual she met, shaking hands with them, looking at every exhibit we had on display. She wasn't at all concerned with the fact that the timetable was running late. And afterwards, one lady said, that just made my day. And now with news on today's GAA match and other sporting events. The main news again this evening, in a day which has literally shocked the entire world, Princess Diana's body has been flown back to Britain. In Paris, police are continuing to investigate the circumstances surrounding her death in the early hours of this morning in a high-speed car chase involving press photographers. And that's all from the newsroom for tonight. A very good evening.